What's going on, my geeks? I'm Kakui Otaka, and welcome to Home Base Serenity. Today, I'm continuing my new Comic Book Legends loadout series that is once again made possible by the 12.10 update that allows us to use our Battle Royale skins within Save the World. I've been really enjoying crafting these new, unique loadouts centered around these famous characters that are beloved around the entire world, and they've been so fun to play around with so far. Are they meta? Well, maybe not completely. Batman certainly wasn't. Yeah, that went well. I mean, it was enjoyable, but limiting myself to gadgets only wasn't very easy. So far, though, the other loadouts I've worked on are not only fun, but also pretty effective. And I think that the loadout for this video is actually my favorite so far, because it caught me by surprise with just how good it turned out to be. And today's comic book legend is Harley Quinn. Nice to meet ya. Love your perfume. What is that? The scent of death? I think it's safe to say that Harley Quinn is one of the most universally beloved characters in all of Batman's rogues gallery. She started off as a psychiatrist in Arkham Asylum. You know, psychologically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. Yeah. But she ended up going down a vastly different path when she fell in love with the most prolific villain in DC history, at least in my opinion, the Joker. Well, hello, beautiful. In the last video, I said that I grew up watching Batman the Animated Series in the 90s, but I honestly don't remember her from that series as I haven't watched it since I was a kid. But I do have recollections of her throughout the time since. And I had just assumed she had always been around. I had no clue she was introduced in that animated series, so I think I'm going to have to rewatch that soon. Well... Obviously. I also really enjoyed this character in the Arkham series of video games. And despite the major issues that Suicide Squad had, Margot Robbie's live action adaptation of Harley Quinn was one of the few bright spots in that mess of a film. I even enjoyed the newer film that I know a lot didn't. I'm known to be quite vexing. I'm just forewarning you. Ladies, shut up! But I won't get into that now. All that I know is that I enjoyed it and Margot Robbie was phenomenal in it. Moving on from that, how am I going to recreate Harley Quinn and save the world? With Beetle Jess. If we're talking about ranged weaponry, Harley Quinn is most well known for using pistols, and Beetle Jess's commander perk gives a buff of 225% to all pistol and SMG crit damage, which made her the obvious choice for commander. <laughs> After doing the gameplay though, I think there's a potential different loadout that could work just as well, maybe even better, but we'll get to that in a moment. Harley is also well known for using melee weapons, specifically bats and huge mallets. Something tells me a whole lot of people are about to die. So I also took that into consideration when making this loadout. Both weapons I'll be using were crafted for me by Death Grip, because while I do have both weapons, I've never really done anything with them. But I've enjoyed them both so much while making this video that I will absolutely be working to get them maxed out as soon as I can. The pistol I'll be using with her is the last word. Death Grips is rolled for fire. fire! because he loves the look of it with the fire element. And I can't say I disagree. For overall usefulness in a wider variety of missions, it would be more effective to have it rolled to energy. But if you need a fire pistol, I would absolutely recommend making this one yours. Another thing to note with this pistol is that the fire rate is different depending on whether you are ADSing or if you're shooting from the hip. Hip firing this weapon gives you a much higher fire rate, which I think is so much fun. It also has some pretty great reload and equip animations. For the bat or mallet, the melee weapon that is probably the best choice out of what we have is the Astro Bat 9000. This is actually one of the best clubs I have ever used in this game. It does really decent damage, has a great attack speed, and it has a unique sixth perk that causes some AOE damage. It also has a really unique and effective heavy attack that launches an energy projectile. It's a little hard to control at first, but once you get it down, it can be so satisfying hitting husks in the distance with that ball of energy. So now that I've gone over the two weapons I'll be using with this loadout, I'm going to move on to the actual hero loadout, starting with one of my favorite team perks, Totally Rockin' Out. No, 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 no! Which buffs Rock and Rift. Oh, thank God for that. That a couple of the heroes in this loadout grant upon certain conditions. Rock and Riff increases your damage by 50% and melee attack speed by 32%, decaying over 8 seconds. And Totally Rockin' Out adds an increase of 160 to your crit rating, also decaying over 8 seconds, and heals you 73.75 base health each time it's propped. 
You need to have two rad heroes in your loadout to activate the team perk, and I'm actually including someone new that I've never used before with this team perk. First up in support is Varsity Hero, whose fumble perk I'm serious about this stuff. Gives you a 7% chance for eliminated enemies to fumble a football, which will proc Rock and Riff when picked up. Up next is Power Pop Penny, the rad hero I mentioned before that I've never actually used. Her bringing down the house perk gives a 12.5% chance for melee attack eliminations to grant Rock and Riff. And this is also where the loadout could be changed. As you'll see in the gameplay, I ended up mostly using the Astro Bat 9000, so you could use Power Pop Penny as commander and then put either Breakbeat Wild cat or main stage Quinn in support for the team perk and just concentrate on going ham with your bat. That's a good idea, honey. It's all about personal preference, which is one of the things I love about this game. One thing I wouldn't change is that I would want to make sure that I have anti-cuddle Sarah in the loadout because I want to be able to use that Astro Bat's heavy attack as much as possible. Her rapid charge perk grants 7.5 energy for every single melee elimination. <laughs> And since I'm using melee weapons, I have Lotus Assassin Sarah and her assassination perk, which grants a stack of assassination for dealing melee weapon damage up to five stacks. Each stack lasts five seconds and increases melee weapon damage by 4.5% per stack. Lastly, I have Arlene Itza and her Monster Smash perk, which increases life leech with melee attacks and going constructor by up to 15% based on the percentage of your missing health. Another change I made with this loadout is that I've actually changed up my gadgets. What? No! I've swapped out my hover turrets for proximity mines because, honestly, Harley also loves blowing things up. And of course, I kept Adrenaline Rush in there in case I need to heal myself. To show this loadout off, I went into a Power Level 108 Deliver the Bomb mission with CJ, Death Grip, and Joden. So let's jump on into the gameplay. Come on, let's go. I think the proximity mines might be a little bit bugged right now because it looked like all four of the ones I set off over here went off at the same time when there was not a single husk near some of the ones that I had placed further away. It's weird, I'm trying to double jump and I'm playing an Outlander. It's because I'm not used to doing melee with an Outlander, I guess. But since I am an Outlander that specializes in pistols, I should be using the last word a little bit. Which is actually pretty spicy. I've never really used it before using this loadout, but I've really enjoyed it so far. Oh, I think our mini boss is here. I didn't do much damage, and it's a smoke screen, so I need to, like, get out of here. Throw down a teddy, and I'm going to run away, because <laughs> I am getting attacked big time by that thing. Let's see if I can actually hit it with the heavy attack. Nope. That's too high. All right, let me concentrate on everything else while everybody else is concentrating on the mini boss. I gotta say, I'm having a lot of fun with this loadout. It's completely different from my normal playstyle, but using this bat and playing like Harley is actually kind of fun. Alright, let me pull out the pistol again. I don't feel like I've used the pistol enough here. And if I'm running Beetlejess as my commander, I need to be using the pistol a little bit more. I'm just enjoying using the Astro Bat, personally. Oh, but that is so spicy. The la <laughs> Using the last word with totally rocking out as active oh my goodness super spicy I kinda like hip firing it more than actually ADSing which is weird I'm usually someone who always ADSs but I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna keep using it without ADSing just to get the increase to the fire rate that's a lot of fun Come on. There we go. That was that was tasty. Oh, I love this heavy attack. So as you can see, this was such an incredibly fun loadout to use. I ended up using the Astro Bat so much more than the last word, but that was because I was just enjoying wailing on the husks with that bat. 
and using the heavy attack for any approaching husks in the distance. That's not to say I didn't still love the last word too though, because I absolutely did. The damage output of that on nature husk when rolled to fire is a little bit spicy. So now I want to talk about how you can get a hold of these heroes should you want to try out this loadout for yourself. Beetle Jess is an event hero from the original 2017 Fort Nightmares and can be recruited from that section of the collection book under Event People by using a hero recruitment voucher as with most event heroes. Varsity Hudel and Power Pop Penny are also event heroes that can be recruited from the collection book in the Rad Heroes area of the event people section. But remember, if you want the totally rocking out team perk, you need to also recruit the mythic constructor Dennis Jr. as he was the hero that unlocked the team perk to go with them. Anti-Cuddle Sarah was just recently in the event store, but she left at the 12.30 update last week. If you didn't get her then or last year when she was a part of the Love Storm quest, you can recruit her from the Event People section of the collection book under Springtime Heroes. Lotus Assassin Sarah is only available in the limited edition version of the game if you chose the Ninja class, or in the Ultimate Edition, which gives you all four classes. Neither of these have been available for a little while, but the good news is that she is a reskin of a base game hero, Assassin Sarah. And you can recruit Assassin Sarah from the Ninja section of the collection book by using 3,000 training manuals and 100 legendary flux. Arlene Itza was unlocked by completing a mini quest line as part of the 2019 Fort Nightmares event, but she has not been made available to recruit from the collection book yet. That could change in the future, as it usually does, so keep an eye out for that. And I think that's going to do it for today's video. I really hope you all enjoyed it. It's so refreshing to actually be trying out new loadouts that are like nothing I've ever done in this game before. In fact, I enjoyed this one so much that I'm considering doing a follow-up where I change the loadout around and use Power Pop Penny as commander and only use the Astro Bat. If you want to see that, please like the video and leave a comment down below to let me know and I might do that video before the end of the season. Also, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you can see each new video as soon as it goes live. I'm getting so close to 200 subscribers, which is honestly mind-blowing to me considering that when I started this channel almost a year ago, I honestly thought that no one would really enjoy my content. But it means the absolute world to me that I am blessed with so many of you that do. I have big plans for the channel, but I have to keep growing to get there. So I hope you'll all join me as I start my Road to 1000 journey. I'll tell you more about my plans for that in future. Some other things have to line up first. Up next on the channel, I'm switching over to Marvel properties as I am working on a loadout video on the Merc with a Mouth himself, Deadpool. And it's definitely a really fun loadout. Then there are two more Marvel loadouts left to finish out the series. After that, I will be doing a 500 plus days logged in account overview to coincide with the one year anniversary of the day I uploaded my Harvester Sarah loadout video last year. And I do have my normal end of season content planned as well. Lastly, if you have a different way that you would create a Harlequin loadout based on her character, please leave a comment down below and let me know what that is. I honestly can't wait to see the other creative options that you all come up with. Before I close out the video, I want to say a special thanks yet again to fellow content creator Impulse. I again used their stunning replication of the Gotham City POI from Season X for the intro to this video and might have used it for the next one as well. What the shit? So please go and check out their channel and subscribe if you like what you saw. And to Impulse, thank you yet again for making this incredible map and helping me with what I needed to make it happen. And as always, special shout outs to my favorite Save the World content creators both past and present. Latana, Demon Joe France, David Dean, Tori X, Aiden Harris, Rounded Tic Tac, Chetic, A1 Get This Money, Death Grip, Nylak Dreams X, Samantha and Enforcer. I've linked all their channels in the description down below, so please make sure to check them out. Thanks again for watching everyone, and stay cool geeks. Have a great day, and stay safe out there.